Hola amigos, que tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with an update video today. We'll have a bit of a chat about what's gone on in Spain over the last week or so while I take my dog for a walk. So uh, let's go. Now I'll get the weather out of the way. As you can see, another sunny day. Sun coming up over the hill over there. It's gonna be around 21, 22 degrees Celsius today. We'll have a look down here. Lots of rubbish on the ground. We're uh, currently in the local fiestas, the local town parties, and uh, last night kids were out and about with their botellón. But I must say that the street is cleaner than it normally would be, so maybe people are finally putting their rubbish in the bin. Empty bottle of rum here, empty bag of ice here. So a little bit of rubbish lying around, but as I said, not as bad as other years when this area here was absolutely covered in plastic and uh, broken glass. So what's been going on in Spain over the last week or so? Well, it's been a big week. Now, the first thing that caught my attention this week here in Spain was a new law that was proposed by the Labour Ministry or the Work Ministry. And uh, basically what they proposed was that when it gets too hot here in Spain, people won't be able to work outdoors in certain types of jobs. Over the last few years here in Spain, unfortunately, some people have lost their lives as a result of working outdoors, doing strenuous work outdoors in the summer months and that's what the government wants to avoid. So as from the 13th of May today whenever it gets too hot here in Spain and the weather bureau announces either an orange or a red alert people as I said in certain type of jobs will be banned from doing those jobs outdoors. The hot temperatures this year, as we know here in Spain, have come early. Over the last couple of months, it has been hotter than normal, and the government deciding to start this plan a little bit earlier than it would normally do, because normally the hot temperatures wouldn't come until uh, maybe the end of May, maybe June, but this year, in April we had hot temperatures and as I said that's why the government has decided to pass this law ASAP. But as I said a couple of minutes ago it's not for all types of jobs. There's a list of jobs where it will be banned to work outdoors when it gets too hot over 36, 37 degrees Celsius I believe. So for example the construction sector, the mining sector too, people that work on fishing boats and people that work in agriculture won't be able to work when it gets too hot. So those are some of the professions. And also people that work for companies whose jobs means that they sometimes have to work outdoors. So those are some of the types of jobs where people won't be able to work outdoors when it gets too hot. And uh, as I said, the idea here is to save lives. Now, another thing that caught my attention this week here in Spain was an idea put forward by the political group Podemos. Last Sunday, they proposed a public supermarket creating some 50,000 and jobs people to work in this public supermarket. Now I said on Monday that in my opinion this is a pretty crazy idea and this topic sure got a lot of debate over the last week or so. And I asked the question earlier in the week, do we really need a publicly run supermarket in this country? Are things really that bad? Especially given the fact that this is a country that has a very competitive supermarket market, if that makes sense. Now I don't know the exact amount of supermarket chains in this country, but but what I will say, compared to some other countries, for example, Australia, there's a lot more choice when it comes to doing your supermarket shopping here than there is, for example, in the country that I just mentioned, Australia. In Australia, there are two major supermarket brands. Some other supermarkets on the fringes down there, for example, the German supermarket chains and some local supermarkets as well. But Coles and Woolworths, or Woolies as they are known in Australia, absolutely dominate the market. But here in Spain, there's a lot more choice. Basically, if you don't like one supermarket or you think their products are too expensive or you don't like their products, there's plenty of other supermarkets to choose from. Yes, it is true here in Spain that some supermarkets are more popular than others. Others. Some supermarkets have a bigger market share than others, but in general, there is plenty of choice. So what is exactly Podemos planning to do? Well, the first thing I'm going to say that a public supermarket wasn't the only idea that Podemos put forward the other day. They also said that Spain should have a public company in all of the strategic sectors in this country. That is what they also said. But when it comes to the supermarket idea, I think the main idea that Podemos has 
is to lower prices and give consumers a better deal. Sounds fantastic, right? Well, and as one economist pointed out during the week, profit margins when it comes to supermarkets and supermarket products are not very high. And this economist also said that in his opinion, there wouldn't be much room there for the public supermarket to lower prices. And another thing this economist pointed out was, would this public supermarket be able to compete with the existing supermarkets? For example, the powerhouse Mercadona. And basically his answer was no, given how efficient the supermarket chain Mercadona is, especially when it comes to logistics. In his opinion, the public supermarket wouldn't be able to compete with companies like Mercadona. Unless, that's right, you guessed it, unless they subsidize prices in this public supermarket with taxpayer money. And I'm sure that idea is on the cards. And basically what this proposal from Podemos is, is an attack on the capitalist system and rich capitalists, like for example, the owner of the Mercadona supermarket, Juan Roj, who seems to be with other rich people in this country, for example, the owner of the Inditex group, Amantia Ortega, the number one enemy of this political group. And that's where the issue lies. Supermarket chains like Mercadona have become too powerful, too successful, have too much of the market share, and Podemos does not like that. Mercadona has 25% of the market share, and that's what really gets Podemos' goat. Basically, and as I said, Mercadona has become too successful for its own good, and that's why political groups like Podemos are going after them. Now, I don't think Mercadona has done anything illegal to get this dominant position in the market. What they do is offer a simple supermarket with simple products, fast service, and that is what people like. And that's why people go back to Mercadona time after time after time, because they like what Mercadona does. And as I said before, if you don't like what Mercadona does here in Spain, there's plenty of other supermarkets to choose from. So a state-owned, publicly-run supermarket here in Spain, in my opinion, not a good idea, but let me know what you think. Is it a good idea or not? And will Spain benefit from a public supermarket like this one? Or is it just another populist idea that has been put forward by this political group Podemos, which, as we know, tends to go down the popular side of politics in this country. Paella that's going to be made later today to feed the hungry villagers. I think you have to pay a euro for a plate of that paella, and I'm sure there's gonna be a huge queue lining up to taste that very popular dish here in Spain, the paella. Now, another thing that caught my attention this week was Prime Minister Sanchez's trip to the United States, his trip to Washington to meet with US President Joe Biden. And they discussed a number of things. Prime Minister Sanchez spoke glowingly of President Biden, saying that he is an example to follow, an example for other democracies around the world to follow. In fact, I haven't seen a country leader suck up to another country leader like that in a long, long time. Mr. Biden seemed to nod off a couple of times during that interview, but I'm sure Pedro Sanchez got his message across. And what did they talk about? Well, as I said, lots of important things. For example, well, one of the things on the agenda is that Spain is going to allow the United States to uh, leave a couple of warships down there in the south of Spain, a couple of extra warships, destroyers, I think they're called, at the naval base down there, as I said, in the south of Spain, in a place called Rota. So that was one thing. And another thing that was mentioned, and this is something that caught my attention, is that Spain has promised Mr. Biden that it will accept migrants that are trying to get in to the United States currently, people that are getting turned away at the border or people that have already got into the United States, maybe illegally. Spain has said that it will take some of these Latin American migrants. But of course, there are no details on exactly how many people Spain will take in or when. Apparently, Spain is going to look at the labor market and the needs of the labor market before it announces how many of these Latin American migrants it is going to take in. So the details of this plan still a bit sketchy, but what do you think? Is it a good idea or not for Spain to take in people from Latin America who are getting turned away from the United States? Let me know in the comment section below. And basically, what Prime Minister Sanchez is trying to get out of this trip to the United States
is to boost his international profile. And meeting people like Joe Biden at the White House is part of the plan. On that note, I'm going to wrap this video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the video out as you normally do. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. If you have a comment about any of the topics that I talked about today in that comment section below. Hasta luego.